When we have code for a method call, we need to figure out which method to go to. Before, when we had mo with objects, every object carried around symbols and functions so that we would know which function to jump to. Example, before, if we were calling mdist, we would search through the object's methods for the symbol mdist, and that's how we would know where to go. Now that we have classes, we can do things a little bit differently and a bit more simply. Instead of storing the method code inside the object, where every POSIN3D object has a copy of the mdist method, we can instead store that in the class. So now every class will have copies of the methods, and then every object can point back up to that class. All we need to store in the object are the class tag and the field values. For a POSIN3D, that means we need the symbol POSIN3D and the fields here, one, two, three. The object doesn't need to store the methods because those are up in the class, and also the names of the fields can be stored in the class. In the interpreter now, we'll have two kinds of value, integers and objects. And an object has a symbol and then a list of values for its fields. We'll also have a type for class, and the one variant, class C, will have names for the fields, list of symbols, and then methods. Each method is a symbol and an expression. For interp, we'll use the following signature. Interp takes an expression, a class table, and two values, and then outputs a value. That second argument maps class names to class values, and then the third and fourth value are for the current object, this, and the method argument, if we're inside of a method. The style for interp is very similar to the one that we had way back in the beginning of the semester. When we added function defs to mo, we would interpret with an expression and then a list of function defs on the side. The list of classes is very similar to that. Here's an example of calling interp. The expression we want to interpret is int e10. In order to do that, though, we need to pass four arguments to interp. First is that int e. Second, we need a class table. Here it's empty, so there are no classes. Third, we need a value for the current object, this. We have a default here that says the object's name is just object and it has zero methods. Finally, we need a value representing the current method argument. We'll use the dummy value zero here. With those four pieces all together, we can check that interpreting an int expression really gives an int value. To interpret some more interesting examples, we need more code. Here's code that defines first a POSIN class and then a POSIN 3D class. And these two are just like what we saw in the last video. A POSIN has X and Y fields and two methods. POSIN3D has X, Y, and Z fields, and the same two methods. Finally, we have a wrapper around interp called interp POSIN. This function takes in one expression, A. It interprets A using a class table that has our two POSIN classes, then a dummy object for this, and a dummy value for the method argument. When we interp POSIN on a new expression that creates a POSIN with the fields 2 and 7, we should get back an object V with the symbol POSIN and the fields 2, 7. Let's wrap that code in a def so we can use it later. When we interpret a method call mdist on our new POSIN 2.7, we should get back the sum of 2 plus 7. Here we've added a POSIN 3D to the bottom of the program. That's new POSIN 5.3.1. And when we interpret method call to the new POSIN 5.3.1, calling the addDist method and sending as argument new POSIN 2.7, we should get back the sum of all those numbers. 